people who don't know about the story of boys locker room let me tell you very briefly what happened some boys had this private chat group called boys locker room on instagram where they shared pictures of girls and passed abusive and sexual comments on them or their body parts then a girl disclosed this chat publicly on twitter she shared many names that were involved then her friends and other people started sharing all of it on social media the boys reacted they tried to stop them and get back at them by giving them threats which included stop this will leak your nude pictures one of the boys even wrote on a chat let's gang rape that girl then the girls publicized these new chats as well obviously and now everyone is shocked people all around are sharing the screenshots people are voicing their opinions on it on social media including me now it has even reached the mainstream tv news channels police have now questioned some of these children arrested the admin of the group who is 18 right now the phones of all the identified members have been seized by the police and sent for forensic analysis my first opinion when i understood the whole story was these guys are idiots someone leaks their chats people are finding them problematic these idiots go on to write even more problematic shit on the chats plain stupid Anyway, I've seen many people saying I'm shocked to see how these boys could say such sickening things. What is the shock? I would be shocked if someone told me that nobody is saying those things in society. I'd be like, "Wow, how did this happen? Did Marvel Avengers come to fix the society or something?" I can guarantee you, this problem has existed in every generation before us. and it will always exist in its own unique form the difference in future hopefully will be will educate people out of it quicker we are born animals and we need knowledge and wisdom through the environment it's not in the dna just like each generation has to go to school for literacy the same way each generation needs repetition of the wisdom for maturity wisdom doesn't stay in the culture it has to be taught from zero all over again generation after generation we are born wild some more than others and the wildness needs to be tamed broadly we can tame it by educating people or we can tame it by punishing people like learn to behave on your own or we'll do that for you in this story we need to employ both educating them and punishing them i would like to talk about three things first the behavior of the boys in the original chat which involved vulgar comments and sexual objectification second the behavior of the boys after the public disclosure which involved giving threats and the rape comment third the role of public shaming in all this first one their behavior in the original private chat what do you think is the cause behind their vulgar language and sexual objectification of women i hear people saying it's happening because of patriarchy or misogyny or sexism rape culture it's not patriarchy is about men holding power in the society these boys are kids they don't hold any institutional power over these girls which is also approved by society misogyny is dislike or contempt for women these boys don't dislike girls they are sexualizing them in fact they actually like them a lot or maybe just their body it's not exactly misogyny sexism means prejudice and discrimination against women some of these kids might be sexist like maybe thinking they are better than women but we can't say for sure finally rape culture means a culture where rape is pervasive and normalized that's not what happened here even in the chat when someone said let's gang rape that girl the person who replied to the rape comment said no one idiot kid saying i want to rape is not rape culture rape culture may exist somewhere but this incident is not an example of it we need to be very careful before we can announce causes finding causation is difficult now i'll give it a try as a general rule the cause of behavior can be divided in two broad categories nature and nurture aka biology and environment let's do it along those lines biological factors include heightened sex hormones in teenagers leading to increased sexual behavior and a teenage brain which has physically underdeveloped frontal lobe and hence not very good at self inhibition and considering long run consequences of behavior then there's a psychological factor also which is very important because it makes men a bit different from women and this has been backed by ample research men are born with a deep desire to have higher status in the hierarchy of men they have a strong need to dominate and have power how do they do this many ways two of which are by display of aggression and by broadcasting that they are sexually successful with women being loud vulgar and sex obsessed are just tools that they are using to climb the power hierarchy people are often inclined to deny these biological and psychological factors because they think we are somehow justifying the actions nobody is justifying anything 
we are only trying to understand the factors. Then there are environmental factors like access to private chats where you don't have to be accountable, appreciation that they get from other males which reinforces the behavior, laughs that they get which fulfill the need for entertainment, even belonging, and then just lack of pushback and feedback from others and finally sheer ignorance. Ignorance about ethics, the long-term consequences, the long-term implications of the behavior and ignorance about the accepted boundaries and legalities of their behavior. Now we have some idea why this is happening, let's get into the goods and bads. Some kids privately passing obscene comments on girls' body parts, bragging about their sexual experiences. How to decide is wrong or right? The best basis to decide right and wrong behavior is to ask the question, what are the consequences of this behavior? Is it leading to suffering or well-being? If it leads to suffering, it's wrong. If it leads to well-being, it's right. By the way, we need to consider suffering and well-being of everyone across the longest time possible. Now let's look at the whole incident from this lens. In the original chat, we saw two main behaviors. First, there was vulgar language. Second, sexual objectification. Whether they shared morphed or nude pictures or not is still under investigation. I'm not going to be addressing that. My focus today is on the vulgarity and objectification. Let's start with vulgarity. What do I mean by vulgar language? Specifically the use of crass language, cheap, dirty words, abusive or swear words, slang words to describe genitals or other body parts, etc. Just distasteful language that you would probably not want to speak in front of your mom or in front of your boss. How do we stop vulgarity? We basically don't. Because it doesn't lead to any real suffering other than loss of some aesthetics and good vibes of some people. Using vulgar language is allowed. It's part of freedom of speech. It's a subjective choice. If you don't like it, don't hang out with people who are using dirty language. Don't be friends with them. Don't marry them. And don't listen to their videos on YouTube. You can choose your experience, but you can't decide someone else's language. Some people are suggesting ban accounts where people talk like that. Banning speech is a dangerous move. It can lead to much greater threats like an authoritarian or totalitarian government. You must never support that no matter what your personal preferences are. Focus on the actual meaning of what's being said, which brings me to the second point, sexual objectification. It means the act of treating a person mainly as an object of sexual desire. Boys do it, girls do it, everyone does it to some degree. But is it right? I'll answer this at the end of the video because it's the most important part of the conversation. I want to briefly talk about privacy now. One can defend these boys saying, well, all their vulgar and objectifying comments were said in a private group. Everyone talks stupid shit in privacy. There's nothing wrong here. Yes and no. I definitely agree that if everyone's private talks were suddenly made public, we will find shocking comments everywhere. So acting all angry, judgmental and superior against these boys is hypocrisy. You have also said some filthy things in your private moments. However, the question is, just because everyone is doing it in their own unique way, does it make it good? Not always. Understand this. Privacy is important, but it comes at a huge cost to society. Huge. Some of the most horrendous things happen in this world simply because there is assurance of privacy. The horrors that happen in the privacy of a home, how parents abuse their children, husbands thrash their wives, partners cheating on one another, people taking away freedom of the elderly, the crimes that happen in companies, governments, carry on because of secrecy. Then of course, sexually inappropriate behaviors like wrong touch, assault and rape, and then even murders. People can become absolute monsters when they know it will remain private. Here's the golden rule. If you're doing something in privacy which you cannot defend morally, you're abusing the privilege of privacy. And in this case, we see that the boys have abused that privilege. I asked them right now, can you morally defend your chats in front of those girls, your own parents, your teachers, the larger public? I know they cannot. The fact that they tried to threaten the girls to suppress the information means that they weren't proud of the chats. They did something in privacy that they were ashamed of and that's abuse of privacy. We need some privacy in life because public can be very judgmental and unfairly so. Now if everyone on earth became as understanding as a good psychotherapist, we won't really need privacy. Privacy is a privilege which allows you to go on with your day-to-day -day life without having to manage people's thoughts related to it. But privacy is not there to do things which would be considered rightfully inappropriate by the society. 
privacy is not there to become unaccountable we are always answerable and always accountable this is why in my life i made this a priority that i want to be the same person privately as i am publicly like imagine if i am a nice charming person in the public but at home i mistreat my brother or my mom or my girlfriend because nobody will know then that's an abuse of privacy and i'm not really a good human being am i so i challenge myself like can my behavior with my closest people be made public i pushed myself to improve until i was able to say yes to that question today if my life goes out in the open i have nothing to fear this is because i keep correcting my inner demons so just because those boys did everything in a private chat we shouldn't just ignore it for their own development we must teach them they're always accountable always answerable now i'm going to talk about the second element the way these kids tried to threaten the girls and the rape comment that a boy made this is where i believe everyone is making a big mistake people are saying bunch of 18 year old kids planning rape on instagram chats this is rape culture these are sick minds wrong wrong and wrong those are the wrong interpretations for what they did the context here is anger hate and revenge when the girls leaked their chats the boys got in war mode they got super angry and wanted to teach those girls a lesson these boys hated the girls for publicly shaming them so their deeper motivation was hate and revenge let's be honest every person in the world has had thoughts of killing someone in anger in hate in revenge and if the hate is deep enough you even entertain thoughts of torturing and killing someone our brain can be a dark nasty place when you're hateful and looking for revenge you can think of the worst possible things i'll kill her i'll rape her i'll burn her face with acid i'll attack her whole family i'll burn her house down the brain can think up such diversely horrific things that you will run out of levels of shocks for it but the mark of maturity in growing up is that we train our rational sides of the brain so that when there is a fight between raw wild emotions and rational thoughts rationality prevails in this case we see an utter failure of rationality we have an idiotic boy who was unable to hold that internal dialogue properly when the devilish side of his brain thought of something horrific he idiotically just blurted it out on the chat didn't think through what he was saying didn't think how terrible it is by typing it on his keypad let's gang rape that girl he made his internal horror concrete and real and that's where all of us went like oh you devil now you're an actual threat to society deep down he's like all of us but externally he's probably a bigger threat so when i hear the story on one hand i can empathize with the kid but on the other i want him to be punished adequately everyone who threatened the girl and this boy who made the rape comment they need to be punished punish them and inform everyone they've been punished so that the next person thinks 10 times before letting out the dreadful contents of their brains people who are thinking they just said some stuff they didn't actually do it what about freedom of speech i want to tell those people you have freedom of speech to say anything you want except threatening or inciting violence if you cross that line society will shut you up and put you away even legally now let's come to the third element role of public shaming on social media one biggest tragedy of this whole story is the unchecked outrage on social media people have mercilessly taken the worst behaviors that came out of that group applied it to all the participants and publicly shamed everyone with their names it's just plain wrong some of them probably didn't even know they were part of a group some probably knew but didn't check the group some maybe checked the group but didn't participate some participated but didn't say something too nasty some maybe said nasty things but didn't go on to threaten the girls some threatened the girls but didn't actually plan a gang rape there would be many different levels of gradation of mistakes here and we need to treat them differently yet here we are lumping all of them together in big headlines and social media posts these boys planning gang rapes do you know how much of a responsibility it is to actually publicly say that this person has done something wrong you need to be very 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 careful about it sharing real names labeled with the worst crime of the group it's so sad this scares me it it really does do you know how hard it is to wash off negative labels from people's minds people don't forget if you want to share the stories hide the name unless you are very very sure about 
that particular person and whenever you take a name follow it up with the exact gradation of the mistake that they made if in that group there were 50 people you need to look at each of them individually the fact that people are not doing that it's horrifying and it's so perverse it's like people want heads on spikes like they're encouraging tag every name call these boys out what do you want justice or you just have thirst for blood in your rage against this problem you just want some people to go down tagging somebody's name publicly with a negative label is a huge huge responsibility never ever do it without due diligence and if you have shared anyone's name without reliable information i would encourage you to go back on social media and apologize you must immediately write a post i shared such and such names i don't have full information on it I apologize for doing it prematurely. By the way, I'm aware of the benefits of public shaming as well. Like public shaming worked really well with Me Too movement. Men in power are scared now. The power of public shaming is immense and with power comes huge responsibility. Responsibility to keep it fair and minimize unnecessary damage. So when is it good to use public shaming? At least two criteria must be met. First, you must have very reliable information that the person actually committed the crime. Secondly, the crime must be extreme enough to warrant public shaming. Like in this case, sexual objectification and vulgar remarks weren't a big enough crime for public shaming, but that gang rape comment probably was. Also, as a general rule, before shaming someone in public, wherever it's feasible, give that person a chance to learn about their mistake apologize and correct themselves. If they resist and remain unapologetic, then yeah, you can bring it out in the open. Sunlight will disinfect them. But if possible, give them a chance before publicly shaming them. Now I'll come back to the main topic on which we need to educate people, especially young boys. Sexual objectification. Is objectification wrong? Well, it's wrong if it's causing some suffering. Is it? At first glance, it doesn't seem that way. Like someone looking at a pair of breasts or a butt or legs, fantasizing their body, discussing with a friend how they want to sleep with them, seems harmless. You had your fun thinking and talking about it, nobody got hurt. No harm, no foul. Well, not quite. There's more to the story. Turns out, mindset of objectification can lead to some suffering for you and for others. Let's understand how. First is dehumanization. Sexual objectification is part of this bigger problem called dehumanizing which means you're denying full humanness to someone. As a result, you describe them and even treat them in a degrading manner. For example, boys use words like, look at this bitch, oh she's a whore. Let's go check out that slut to describe girls. And then naturally, who gives a shit about what a bitch, whore or slut feels? Do whatever the hell you want with her. Objectifying or dehumanizing girl would make it easier for you to sexually assault them because your pleasure is more important than their suffering. If you know history, dehumanizing is behind some of the worst crimes of humanity. Slavery could continue for millennia because of dehumanizing. Hitler was able to kill millions of Jews because of dehumanizing. I know objectification is not nearly as dangerous as those, but it runs along similar principles. So it's not all harmless. Second problem with all of this is, when you objectify, you act like the most important attribute about women is their looks. Good looking women become more valuable for you, bad looking ones become less valuable. You don't feel the need to pay attention to what does that girl enjoy, how does she talk, what her opinions are, how funny she is, how talented she is. This mindset limits what kind of a relationship you would want to develop with them how you would interact with them. If you're someone who overly objectifies women, would you be able to sustain a proper friendship with a female or you'll just be sexualizing them? Would you hire a female employee based on looks or talent? When you marry someone, would you love them less if their looks declined over time? When you're talking to a woman, would you be listening to her or staring at her breasts? When you meet a new girl, would you want to get to know her or just sleep with her and forget her? See, if your mindset is of objectification, you'll be making all those decisions being blind to a substantial part of their reality. You're engaging with a very narrow view of them. Your interactions with women will not be very diverse, rich or interesting because you left a lot out of focus. The connections you make either won't last or they will be unsatisfying for both of you. In that sense, it's a loss to everyone. No one wins. Yes, you'll feel sexual towards them. Yes, you will like their legs, butts and breasts and that's okay. It means your biology is working fine. But just push yourself to have a wider, more complex and 
a fuller perception of them. By the way, if you come from a respectful place, if you treat them as full humans, you can of course compliment their looks. They will sure love it. It's just that when you only focus on their looks, it feels you're denying them their rich existence, which obviously isn't a good experience for them. Which brings me to my next point. When you objectify a girl, you are treating her with less respect than she deserves or expects. This comes back to haunt you in the long run. Our society is very reciprocal in nature. If I see you disrespecting someone else, deep down I lose some respect for you. Almost as if since you can't give it, you don't deserve it. Plus, it signals to me that if you can treat someone else badly, maybe you can treat me badly. And I don't want that. The other boys who are laughing at your vulgar or objectifying remarks, who you think find you cool and strong, they probably just say behind your back, uh, he's a pervert, he's an idiot, he tries too hard, he's a wannabe. They probably see you as the source of entertainment, but not someone who they can actually take seriously. Like you probably won't be a friend who they can take home. Think about this, if another boy sexualizes women and describes them obscenely, you don't want that kind of a guy around your girlfriend your sister, your female cousin, because God knows what he's thinking inside about them. So don't be that guy. If you really want to be respected, respect others. I understand that you want to sound powerful, you want to act like a real man, you have to maintain your position in the boy gang, I get it. Guys go through that. But remember, you don't have to go extreme with it. You can be with your boys, joke around, talk about girls, be cool, be the man, but do it in a manner that if everyone was reading your chats, or listening to what you were saying, you wouldn't have to be embarrassed. Live life, don't go overboard. Balance and moderation is the key. Appreciate women, don't objectify. Don't worry, your life won't become boring. We all have a capacity to be entertained in so many diverse ways. You can let go of the fun of objectification and make some healthier fun choices and still live a very cool, happy, exciting, thrilling and viable life. Hope this makes sense to you. Good luck.